The start of the second round is here at the Pensacola National Speedway here in Florida for the K&M 250 short 13 lap race, plate racing and pack racing. On the pole is Matthew Burns in the A1 as Griffin Lynn stepped out of the A1 after being eliminated in round one to focus on his cup efforts trying to get that Gatorade Cup Series Championship. James Ryan in the 20 will be two is outside. Then 30 of Keith Stevens, fourth is Christian Parker and Ryan with top five another driver that was eliminated, Christian Richardson. Then 60 of Xavier Sullivan Jr. Seventh is Jeff Moses, eighth is Trey Rainey, their highest starting chaser. Then 90 of Greg Lee rang out the top 10, Jonathan Raines. For the rest of you, got Justin Ethan in the three, Michael Cantor in the A4. And then there's Jennifer Beeper and Alan Bowman, Derek Camel and Keegan Thompson. Then you have Jonathan Beeford and Michael Ferris, the other chaser. Danny Bright and Dave Stablito. Then there's Jack Henry and JJ Reed. Alex Stewart and Lan Fenway, a chaser. Then Luke Rainey, another chaser, and Ray Sir. Then Dylan Mills and Justin Zaydell set the world on fire in this first round. Now on to the second round. They have Gustavo Rocha and Tim Gary. Cynthia Bright, who missed out on a tiebreaker last round, and Code Luigi, the benefiter of that tiebreaker. They have William Seaman, another chaser, Riley Spray, who and final round of the field. Colton on the 15, with the two's outside being the 29 of Isaac Nichols. That's your 36 truck starting lap. Let's go down to track side and get the command to fire the engines. Gentlemen, start your engines. Settle in, relax, take a deep breath. This is a long, hard race. You've got to pace yourself. The start of what's going to be one crazy Penzo Truck Series round number two. The start at Pensacola. The next two races at Talladega and Texas World. So, you know, that's going to be an interesting round number two to start out and make it to Homestead. Three drivers eliminated in this round, four move on to compete for the championship at Homestead. The seven drivers left are Land Fenway, Michael Ferris, Luke Rainey, Justin Zidell, Cole Luigi, Riley Spurley Tube, and Trey Rainey. Now, because of the chase points that these drivers accumulated in the regular uh, season, Landon Fenway has 25 points already, with Michael Ferris with 20, Luke Rainey with 16, on down to Trey Rainey, who only has seven coming into this race. So those chase points can make or break your round number two. Front three starters, Toyotas, with Matthew Burns on pole, summing for Griffin Lynn, Pace Truck is in, a short 13 lap race around Pensacola, let's get going, three and four wide racing into the restart zone, we're racing at Pensacola, green flag is in the air. No one had anything for pole here, Matthew Burns, and he'll lead lap one here at the K&M 250. Here comes Richardson for that second position in the 22. Greg Lee down low three wide in that 99 truck. Puts Michael Ferris up to the middle lane that 23. Danny Bright down low in the 39 with J.J. Reed pushing him. As Richardson has no help down low, the Toyotas stay together. Ryan up top with Stevens. Bear comes at 20 down low with a big move in front of that 99 and down to the bottom to try and help the 22 of Christian Richardson out. Down the back stretch they race. Three by three in the pack. Yeah, these guys need to really be pushing each other and helping each other out, trying to get by the A1. If they keep battling for a second behind, no one's going to get by the A1. Matthew Burns could lead every lap, all 13 laps, and get to victory lane. But there's still a lot of time left, over 10 laps to go, coming to 11 to go this time by. Ryan going for a second. He has a pretty good push from a line by him. A ton of trucks behind him down this bottom lane. But look at JJ Rita bending to the bottom lane. Dylan Mills in the 07. There's Luke Rain in the 88. One of your chasers. He's trying to make the final four at Homestead. Here he comes with a push. Giving a push to Dylan Mills. There's Coluji in the 32. He made the next round on a tiebreaker. Beat Cynthia Bryan that tiebreaker. He's up inside the top 10 with three chasers lined up on the bottom lane. Luke Rain, Coluji, and Riley Spurley too. Mills looking for that race lead as they go through one and two. He had a run, couldn't get there, but that idiot can stay lined up with him. He can make a move down here, down the back. He has a run. He stays in line for now. When does he make the move? Luke Ray's going to make it first. Four seconds. The 88 truck. 
Collusion in the 32 had no help from behind, just the 9 as they went 3 wide behind. That really stalled out his run. Now they're 4 wide inside the top 5. That's for 5th. Racer in the 5 all the way to the bottom with a push from the 9 to William Seaman. Luke Rainey gets 2nd. Collusion to 3rd. Do these drivers make a move for the race? Does Luigi make a move for 2nd? They come off turn number 4. Remember, leading lap is a bonus point, so Luke Rainey and Collusion just want to do that at some point in this race. 10 to go. Collusion goes for 2nd. And no one's been able to touch Matthew Burns as of now. He's gotten out front and controlled the race from the pole. Luigi, if you get a push from Racer, you can try and go to the bottom lane lead lap. That would be a bonus point. Off of turn number two and down the back stretch. Nearing 200 miles an hour as they come off turn number two. Luigi, he's going to try and block Racer. Circles all the way down to the double yellow line. They're now going to be three wide for the race lead down this back stretch. Racer with a big move. Can he make it work? I think Cole Luigi has position down low. He got down front of that five. Colonia went high to try and help the 81, Matthew Burns. Can Cole Luigi get off a four and lead the lap and get that bonus point? It may not seem like a lot, but as they come off turn number four, Cole Luigi will have a bonus point as he leads lap number four. And a four wide battle at the stripe. Big move there by the 10 of Tim Gary down to the bottom. Gary has that lane down low there. Almost four wide. They might actually be four wide for that race lead. No race sir. Cut down front of that tenth. So now they're back down to three wide. They're four wide in the pack. Good thing about Pensacola for these drivers. Once you get up top and fall back, you could fall back in a hurry and get right back up to the front. Hurry. It's very easy to make your way back and forward here at Pensacola. They're going four wide once again. Keegan Thompson, the 51, looks low. Can't get there. Doesn't have a run. But Xavier Sullivan Jr., down there, so there's still three wide for this race lead. No one had an advantage there. Through three and four. Sir, trying to get push clear. Look at that pack from afar. My gosh, the snarling pack coming down this front stretch. Sir moves high. Here comes the 10 of Tim Gary down low. Keegan Thompson looking all the way down low as they come to the stripe. Thompson got back up the line behind that 10. Code Luigi still looking middle lane there. He's stacked up pretty big there. Four by four by four in the pack. Racer clears. Tim Gary's trying to get clear to second. Xavier Sullivan Jr. trying to get to third. And down also Christian Parker, James Stablil, and Landon Fenway who comes in the, this race with the points lead. Fenway's a good, good chance right here to try and extend that points lead and get into a pretty comfortable position heading to these final furies. But you're not in a comfortable position this round. Uh, oh, there they go into the pack. Cancel gets spread around. Cold Luigi won them in the 32. Matthew Burns, your pole sitter. J.J. Reed, and Rocha gets into it at the end. Greg Lee, possibly. Trey Rain, the 18, has possibly gotten missed. There's Zydell, Spurly Tube, Yo, Nichols, and the yellow flag is out here. They're racing back. Look at this, three wide. And because Parker banned that 10, Sir gets back in front. And I don't know who got second. Sullivan Jr. off the top got second. Look at all the trucks that got away. Not many. The 93 of Chaser got away. The 23 of Chaser. Those are right now the front two in the points. Those are the only two Chasers in this pack. And maybe some more to get away. Luke Rainey may have possibly gotten away in the 88 truck. Look and see if Trey Rainey possibly. I think Spurly 2 may have gotten away. Rainey may have gotten away. I really think the only Chaser that got severe damage in that was Koluji. He's on pit road now. There's Burns and Nichols with their damage. Reigns. I don't know if he's a lap down. No, he's on. He must have come down pit road. So this could be beneficial to him. He'll get caught back up. He could have a shot still. So I saw Canto be the first car to, or first truck to go around that got called Luigi. So let's see how this happened. Luigi, a chaser, has a ton of damage, and this could be a big hole to start out this chase. The intensity level is picking up. They're coming down to the end of the race. Michael Canto in the A4, I think it's just a little bit too high there, and he and Nichols are going to get hooked together right here. And that sends them up into the A1. Matthew Burns into Cole Luigi. They get spun around in front of the field. This is where it gets big. Canorama, last race winner. There's Alan Bowman, Greg Lee, the... 17 of Alex Stewart got Jeff Moses. Colton Yo up off the ground. JJ Ree in the four. There's a Rocha getting hit by Moses. Rocha gets down and gets Moses again. Lee getting through the middle by his damage. Danny Bright. There's Trey Rainey. Cantle gets spun around. Cynthia Bright's in there. That's where Danny got his damage. Code Luigi is sitting backwards there. There's Burns. Spurly Tube. So many good trucks involved. Luigi had a pretty good truck. M Burns had what looked to be the best truck out there. Next to the 88, Luke Rainey, top screen. We saw he actually got through it. He hit the brakes. It looks like he was actually able to get stopped in time. Because that is just carnage here going into turn number three. Big mess. And that, that's junk. That's the big one. You almost up off the ground there. Or almost up and over. 
Yeah, you see Luke Gray got slowed down in time to where he got around the outside. Zed down the 13, I see right there. He may have gotten some damage. I don't know if it's Trucks gonna be bad. We'll have to see on this restart, but Justin Zydell may have gotten some damage. But Kolucci, the chaser, has the most damage. His day is possibly done. As back in front, Racer in the five, trying to haul off the rest of the field. He'll lead us to the green flag on this restart. It's gonna be with under five laps to go here at Pensacola. Three laps to go restart here at Pensacola. It'll be the final one of the night. Out front, Racer in the five. From that crash, two chasers have retired. Luigi in the 32 will finish dead last. Not good for his point situation. Isaac Nichols in the 29. Then there's the A1 Matthew Burns. The 13, Justin Adele is also out. He dominated the first round, but now he's in a hole starting this round. And Colton on the 15 is also retired. Arocha is one lap down the 31. 30 trucks on the lead lap with Racer leading for this restart. Second will be Xavier Sullivan Jr. Third, Tim Gary, Chris Parker. Fourth, Keegan Thompson. Fifth, your high chasers, the 93 Land Fenway. And sixth. We restart. Green flag back out for Racer. Three to go. Trunks, trucks jump high, jump low. Fenway goes high. One of your chasers. Ferris stays in line. He's your next highest chaser. As Sir trying to get a lead as they come through one and two, just building up to speed. If Xavier Sullivan Jr. can get a push right here from the eight and the 51, they'll have a run on that five. The eight stays in line for now, but down the back stretch, they'll start to move high. And that's where you see who's going to ban low. Down the back stretch. Junior may move, but Parker makes it more, and there are three wide down the back stretch. Can the eight stay down there, or can the 50 get clear in the middle lane? Trucks trying to get away. Trucks trying to get up here to get in front. Xavier Sullivan Jr. is out front. Christian Parker to second. Tim Gary going for third. James Stabile is fourth on this inside lane. How about the Bufords working together? John the Buford and Jennifer Buford as coming up into the pack. Luke Rain's trying to get caught up in that draft, but he has no help from behind. Down the front tracks, trucks breaking out low with two laps to go. Junior leads. Second is Parker. Third is Gary. Parker gets back down line second. He's looking low. And one and two. The 50 left the bottom lane open. And Christian Parker has the lane down low. Does he have the help from the 10? The 50 with no help up top. Tim Gary go for a second as Christian Parker clears down the back stretch. There comes to see the white flag this time. No holes barred. Tim Gary in the 10 down low. He has a push from the 77. Keith Stevens and Williams. He might come in. They're going to go four wide for third. Coming to the white flag. Tim Gary trying to get clear. Seaman going for second. He's four wide down low. James Stablino's a run. Just Heath can Luke Rainey win and advance to Homestead. He's a chaser on the inside lane. Come to the white flag. Off of four. They'll make it to the white flag one more time around Pensacola. Who gets back in front? Does a chaser win? Does a non-chaser steal the glory? Seaman with a peak down low. Here comes the 92. Stabile backing up the inside lane. He has no run in that seven truck. They come off of turn number two. They'll see the backstretch for the final time. Seaman has no up down low. Tim Gary with all the up up top. Can Gary get clear as they come down the backstretch? Final time at Pensacola. Down the back. Stablito, that truck obviously up to speed, and Seaman with no help, he'll fall back, and Tim Gary is back clear as they enter turn three for the final time. Can Gary hold on there four wide in the pack? Tim Gary trying to hold on, the inside lane has no help. Now can Seaman get a off a turn number four, now a shot. Stablito's pushing him forward. They come off a of turn number four, can Seaman duck low, can Gary hold off? Off of four, Seaman looks low, Gary moves high. The 10 truck of Tim Gary is gonna win at Pensacola. And what was about 15 truck pack, Tim Gary with the push on the outside lane, holds off William Seaman, and Tim Gary wins a wild race at Pensacola. And William Seaman, once again, short of a win, he ends up second here tonight. Gary, with all the glory, winning at Pensacola. Let's go check the finishing results and the chase standings. Here are the finishing results from the K&M 250 at Pensacola. There is one caution flag for four laps and four lead changed among five different drivers as Tim Gary brings home with the victory off the high side, beating Lean Seaman to the line who ends up second, Keith Stevens ends up third, James Stabley on fourth, and Racer leading the most laps at sixth ends up fifth. Just Heath ends up sixth, Jennifer Beaford seventh, Luke Ray up to eighth, the best chaser in the field so that definitely gains him points towards the cutoff line, Christian Richardson ninth, and Derek Campbell rounds out the top ten. There's your top 20. Some other chasers having some bad days. Only one finishes inside the top 10. Only one finishes inside the top 12. Fenway ends up 13th. Ferris ends up 15th. Look down. Trey Rainey in 18th. Riley's pretty YouTube in uh, 19th. So chasers not having the days they're looking for. Is at the end, it was 16 trucks in that pack. The rest maybe got caught up with some slower trucks that may restart in the middle of the pack. Look down. See the rest of the chasers and how badly Zydell and Luigi did. 
as they finished 33rd and 36th with the others all finishing top 20. That's going to be bad for them is that the right side of the screen is the points. You can see Fenway, of course, with that points lead. And uh, Luke Rainey second, Michael Ferris in third, and fourth being Riley Spurley Tube. He has by two points over Trey Rainey, who's out. Justin Zidell is out by 12 points. And Code Luigi, excuse me, is out by 16 points. So those two, uh, they're definitely a good ways back, double digits back. But you can gain it back. Remember, as we said, these next two races are still plate tracks, pack racing. So anything can go wrong for any chaser at any moment in these next two races. As you look forward to the next race, which will be at Texas World Super Speedway for the Nationwide 250. Another crazy race in the second round of the chase. I'll see you guys then.